Good, good. Yeah, you guys didn't stay out late partying, I take it. Everyone here is, uh, is actually awake. So thank you so much for coming to my talk of creating a powerful user defense uh, against attackers. My name is Ben Ten. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I, I actually have 12 years of experience in uh, healthcare, uh, uh, in healthcare industry. We, we deal with uh, over 35 different hospitals in the Chicagoland area. Um, I'm the vice president and security officer. Uh, so even though I look young, uh, I've actually got a decent amount of experience. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I'm a developer. I build things. I, I've been writing programs since I was 12 years old. Uh, one of my first applications was a virus on my um, family's computer. And after my mom found it, she threatened to call the cops on me. So that was great. Uh, security consultant and trainer. And uh, I deal with federal regulation, uh, oversight with HIPAA, high tech, meaningful use, all of that other fun crap. Uh, and I manage a team in the department, uh, a team of uh, IT people. But one of the big things about me is I'm a gamer. I'm a geek. I love uh, doing a lot of different uh, strategy-based games and tower defense games. I love sci-fi. This is my very first time in Detroit. So thank you guys for having me out here. So I, did, I didn't know what to expect. So it's, so far, it's, uh, it's having a fun time. And then uh, with the way that I look, uh, it's, it's really hard to be a vice president and to look like you're 12. Uh, the CEO is uh, a woman at our company. And we went to one of the facilities, and we're checking in, and we're doing there to go. And I'm there to do a security assessment for them, and uh, you know, real professional, re re ready to get going. I'm in a suit. Doesn't happen very often. And we check in. The CEO signs in. The receptionist, nice, nice little lady. She's just like, oh, welcome, welcome. And she looks at me. And she's like, did you bring your son with you today? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm the vice president. <laughs> So uh, it's, 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 it's all right. It's fun. A lot of people don't take me seriously, uh, and that's all right. What we're going to be talking about today is the overall defensive strategy uh, that we have with creating a user defense. Uh, one of the recent terms that they've, they've just now started to apply is the human firewall. How many of you guys have heard that? Have you guys seen that? The human firewall or the human IDS. And that's basically what we're trying to create here. And I, I'm, I, I'm trying to look at my slides and everything, so if I move around, I apologize. We want to talk about user security awareness. And this is a, one of the big problems that we see with a lot of organizations today of getting the users actively engaged in your security defense. I'm going to talk about some of the tools that we did. We'll go into announcements and uh, Q&A. So security defense right now that we have is like an onion. And it's not that it stinks is that it's multi-layer. When you create a defense, it's not meant to be a one-stop solution. If you go back and you look at all of the different defensive strategies and styles, this is not just in technology, but let's look at forts. When you created a fort, oftentimes when you had to get it something up and done, it was one wall, one point of failure. So that if that wall fails, you're done. When we create a defense, when it comes to technology, we can't think of the one-stop solution. It's not just your AV. It's not just your blinky box. There are multiple layers, a fort similar to this. There's six different moats, six different walls, six different bridges that you have to get to to get to there. This design is not meant to necessarily keep people out. It's to slow people down. And that's what we need to start thinking about when we think about defensive strategies. It's not just a one-stop solution. It's not that we get rid of something because it's not working exactly the way we want. It's the whole idea is to slow it down. And our users are, are supposed to be one of these lines of defense, one of these layers. So think about gaming. And so you, know, you think about trying to set up a defensive strategy when it comes along with it. Now, this could be either a threat or your user base, whichever you want. You, know, you guys can decide on that one. <laughs> so you think about that, and you think about how you're going to set up your defense. Because your enemy is going to come at you with everything that they've got. And it's not so much to try and keep them out as much as it is to slow them down so you can stop them and get them out of your network. I mean, that's a big thing right now with a lot of organizations even identifying that they have the threat. One of the th things that I have learned is that our users are great at identifying threats when they are on board with your team. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about. So what is the current state of security awareness, education, and security awareness overall? It's horrible. 
right now, the users, no matter how great of your security, your users are still letting people in. They have to get out. They have to do their job. You can't black box them. And so when they have the ability to come and go as they please, think of it like the fort, they can leave the door wide open. And we're sitting there going, would you close the freaking door? Just don't click on the link. So that's part of the problem. But let me tell you, no matter how many controls you have in place, users have enough aptitude to bypass your controls for their ineptitude. They don't have to be elite anymore. They don't have to know commands or routing techniques or whatever. They download a single app or they go visit a website that'll do this for them. It'll bypass all of your stuff, your DLP and everything. If they want to get to it, they have the tools to do so now. So it's no longer a technical control that we need to work on. It's the person. It's working on that person and getting them on our team. Organizations are now considering whether or not security awareness education or training is even worth it. They're spending billions of dollars across the industries trying to get users involved, and it's failing. And it's really no surprise. When you see statistics like this where 80% of 400 West Point cadets clicked on a link in a phishing emails after four hours of security training. And consider that 90% of all malware requires human interaction. And so you, you, you look at this and you're like, what is going on? Well, the most recent uh, TrustWave uh, report, the variety of social actions, phishing was 77% overall. This is not, this is not remote code execution on uh, just an external port facing. This is attacking your user layer. It's directly attacking you. And the number one way of doing it for the vector is email. It's the, using, it's the user. I mean, 13% of in-person, but even still, it requires somebody there. And yet, the first thing we want to do is throw this, throw this entire layer out the window because it's not working. Well, when you see stuff like this, or when management or C-level see this, they're like, why are we spending all of this money? It's not working. So then you, so then you also see that uh, the compromised target, when you actually look at them as an asset, the user is 71% of that compromised target. There's a problem with this layer. This is uh, another thing that uh, a lot of the, that the, was in the TrustWave report was that the more emails per campaign, the higher your chances are of getting the click to reach 100%. This is a problem for us. And when you look at your C-levels, when you look at your ex executives, they look at their money and say, why are we investing money in this? It's not doing us any good. Then you get people like Dave Itell saying, if there's one myth in the information security field that just won't die, is that an organization's security posture can be substantially improved by regularly training employees in how not to infect the company. He goes on to say, employees can't be expected to keep the company safe. In fact, it's just the opposite. Security training will lead to confusion more than anything else. Now, I got really pissed off when I read that because I think that's asinine. But not to be outdone, Mr. Bruce Schneier says, I personally believe that training a users in security is generally a waste of time and that money can be spent better elsewhere. Moreover, I believe that our industry's focus on training serves to obscure greater failings in security design. I went Super Saiyan. <laughs> Absolutely asinine. We have statistics that show that this entire layer is failing, failing desperately, and the only thing we want to do is throw it out. That's asinine. Instead of making something better, we're just going to get rid of it and deal with it. That's stupid. Part of the reason that this is failing is because of the way that we're approaching the trainings. So why is security awareness training failing? What's the problem? <coughs> Part of the problem is user apathy. They don't care. They don't care. They did not get hired to work for your organization to go through your security jump uh, loopholes. They don't care. They don't care about the security. Their job is to get that report over to the management as quick as possible, and they're going to do it whatever way possible 
And if they're looking for something, they're going to go click it because they don't care. The only thing that they see us is somebody to inhibits their job. That's it. Why can't I just leave my computer unlocked? Why can't my password be A, B, C, D? I just want to get back to my desk. I don't want to spend five years of my life typing in my password. All, that's all they see us as. They don't care. Part of the reason is we haven't given them a reason to. This is, this is another reason. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> have you tried sticking it up your arse? <laughs> That's part of the problem right there, is us. We're intolerant, we're impolite, we're impatient, and we're irritating. And I'm not saying that about just you. That's, that's me. People would call me and I'd be like, yes, well, there's a problem with my keyboard. Really? Okay. I I've got APTs on my internet right now. I have to deal with them. And I'm not, no, I don't, don't have time for you. And I gave them that environment, that, that perception, that when they called me, they were bothering me because they were stupid. Part of the other problem is the way that we perceive them. I seriously hope that this was a stage photo because those guys are dead. <laughs> that they're inept, that they're ignorant, that they're irresponsible, that they're illiterate. And there are times that I look at somebody and I say, are you serious? Hi, there's a problem with my keyboard. OK, well, what's wrong? Well, I don't know. Can you come look at it? Sure. Well, I go over there. I pick up the keyboard, and tea is draining out of this thing. Oh, yeah, I spilled tea on that. Is that bad? No, it's fine. We water the keyboards at night, too. It's OK. <laughs> and you wonder. You're like, are you serious? But we can't treat them that way if we want them on our team. We come to these conventions, and we make fun of them, and then we go back. So what's the end result when we've got these two things? We've got security failure at this point. We've got two sides of this defense that aren't working together. One that doesn't care, that think that we're completely jerkish, and our side where we don't want to deal with them because we think that they're too stupid to figure out something that's simple. Well, this is the result. This is why security awareness is not working. It's because you don't have two teams working together. How, are you, how do you expect to get this to work together? It's not going to. It doesn't matter how great of a security awareness training program you have. If your users don't care, it's going to be ineffective. And I'll also say, it doesn't matter how great of a security awareness program you have. If your users think that you don't care, it's going to be ineffective. You're not going to get buy-in if your users don't think that you actually care about them. It's no different than you or I. You or I are not going to do something or, or, or buy into something if you think that I don't care about you. I need you guys to do something with me. But if you think that I think that you're a complete idiot or I think that you're asinine, there's no way you're going to do it, even if you think my idea is great. It's no different with them. We can't have double standards in this. We wouldn't want somebody to treat us that way, and yet we do it all the time. And then we wonder why they're not buying into our programs. Security training doesn't mean that you're accomplishing security education. Security training has to die in a fire <laughs> because it's not working. Education is something completely different. When you want to educate somebody on your staff or on your team, you don't just sit them in front of the computer for two hours and expect them to be really good at it. That's stupid. And you're not worth your salt as a manager if you think that that's the best way to train somebody. You come alongside them. You coach them. When they make a mistake, you don't make them feel like a complete idiot. You say, well, OK, that was bad. Go fix it. Now here's how not to do that again. That's what we need to do when it comes to our users. And it takes a lot of extra work for us. 
If your users aren't responding to your security awareness program, perhaps the issue isn't your users, perhaps it's your program. And that's tough. Because the first thing we want to do is blame the user. Well, they just don't get it. I mean, this is very smart and educated, and I get it, and it completely makes sense to me. But they're not getting it, so they're just too stupid to figure it out. And that's our posture. That's our mentality. And that has to go away. So how do we repair it? How do we create this security defensive layer? What do we do at this point? Well, one of the first things that I had to do was I had to figure out how I was going to get our users to actually do buy-in to my security, to my security uh, plan. And the first thing I had to change was myself. I was, I was irritated. Nobody wanted to talk to me. Nobody wanted to bring an issue to me. And that was just general technical issues, much less security emails, or much less phishing attempts, much less anything else, because they were too afraid that I was going to treat them like the idiot that I had previously. I had to change myself first. And the first thing I had to do is start dealing with respect. Treating that user with common respect. Yes, they confused the crap out of me when they did some of the things that they did. And I really questioned their intellectual aptitude. But I still had to deal with that, treat them with respect because I need them on my team. I don't have a choice. I, can't, I don't choose my team. I don't choose my user team, and neither do you. But you need them on your team, and you can't burn that layer by your attitude. So what did we do? We created a security competition. This was after I changed my attitude. This was after I started treating people with respect, when I actually said, thank you for letting me know that you just destroyed your keyboard. Thank you. At least I know now, and I can work on. So we created a competition. We changed our learning style from uh, punishment-based to incentive-based. And then uh, we actually did real-life examples of some of our threats. And I'm going to go through and how we did all of that. So this is what we didn't do. We didn't do a presentation in a conference room. We didn't do our security manual, go through this, read this in four hours, sign off on it, and go back to your desk. We didn't scare everyone that they were going to lose their job if they clicked on something. I mean, that's a real threat for a lot of organizations, and for ours as well. We deal with healthcare. We have a huge DLP issue. We've got to be careful with that. But it wasn't working scaring them. It wasn't doing anything. It wasn't changing anything. The same behaviors and attitudes were still there. So we decided to scrap that and try a different approach. So to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about with incentive-based learning, I need a volunteer, please. I know it's early. You want to come out? Have you seen any of my talks? OK, good. Come on up. <laughs> Can you guys give my hand? Come on. I know it's early, but give my hand. How are you doing this morning? Good. Are you a little nervous? You should be. All right, what's your name? Chris. Chris? All right, so Chris, uh, have, you, have we ever met before? No. OK, so, uh, so as as yeah, yeah, I don't think we've met. So um, we're going to be implementing something new here at B-Sides Detroit. It's a new security thing. It's going to be a new buzzword and everything else like that. I'm going to train you in this new security thing. But uh, if you don't do exactly what I tell you to do, I'm going to kick you out of my talk, and you have to go to some, the next door. I mean, so I mean, I'm just going to kick you out. I mean, I'm nobody. Can I unvolunteer myself? See, now? exactly <laughs> right. And that's it right there. Do you see that? My approach, I'm going to kick you out of my talk. You do what I tell you to do, or there's a consequence. I didn't get any buy in. Do you care about what I'm going to have to do right now? Not really. Okay, so let's try this. I've got fifty dollars here if you're going to be willing to do something with me on stage, but you have to do it. it as long as I can keep my clothes on, we're probably. <laughs> 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 Stop that kind of topic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Put it on. 
Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, give Chris a big hand. Come on, man. Good job, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Chris didn't know what he was getting into, man. I've got another $50. Who would like to volunteer now? All right, you come on out. And just because you volunteered, there you go. Thank All right, you. there you go. that's it. My w <laughs> Who would like to volunteer now? I s <laughs> now stop. Look what I did. Do you see what I did? The first time through, I told the guy I was going to kick him out. My security thing was awesome, but the way that I approached it was asinine, and that's why it's failing. We sit there and we threaten our users with consequences. There's not going to be any buy-in. We need to get them to want to be on our team. I got only one person raise their hand at the beginning of this. After the third time, I saw this to see hands go up because you were starting to get buy-in. You didn't care about what I had to do up there. There was something in it for you. That's the mentality that we need. And that's what it is. Now the problem is, is I tried to get buy-in from one other person to come up here, and he wouldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I needed more money, apparently. So we tried to get Wolf Gangnam style, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be, that's, that's like my new background image right there. <laughs> when we announced the security competition, people were so excited that we caught an actual security incident. I sent out the email to everyone saying, hey, we're going to have this competition. What's going to happen is, is that you're, we're going to do actual security in incidents. You're going to see emails. You're going to see files on your computer. We're going to have some stranger walk through our suite. We need you guys to identify anything that's out of the ordinary. You see, that's the difference, is that I didn't go through and tell them, this is the CISIS top 20, this is the OWASP top 10. I didn't do any of that crap. I said, you know what your daily job is. You know what you do from the time you get here to the time you go. If you see anything out of the ordinary, let me know. That was it. They know their job. Just tell me something that's out of the ordinary. So I get a call. Hi, I found one of your security incident thingies. The competition hasn't started yet. <laughs> oh, well, there's a box on my computer saying it's unauthorized access. Well, sure enough, I go over in one of our remote facilities. They had a, uh, a breach. And she's like, I had been clicking this box for two weeks now. <laughs> but do you see what I did? I asked them to slow down, spot something that you don't typically see. They don't need to be experts at this stuff. They know their job. My computer's acting funny. I want to know about it. I do. I want to know when your computer is not doing what it should be doing. When you log in and you see 15 black boxes flash on your screen, I want to know about it. When you go to a website and you type a search and all of a sudden your search engine typic your default changes, I want to know about it. I do. Because I want to know what's going on with your system. And they're the first persons to let us know. Because I can't catch it all. There's no Pokemon security. You can't. You, no matter how many blinky boxes you have, you need that user to tell you what's going on. So how, do we, how did we do this? Well, the first thing that you're going to do is that you need executive buy-in. If you don't have executive buy-in, it's not going to work. They have to be on board. They have to be excited about it. You also need to get your IT teams involved because they're the first people that are going to be dealing with the users. And their attitudes and mentality and the way that they interact with users, that has to change too. The other thing is you actually have to sell it to your users. They have to buy into it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And again, part of that is changing the way that you interact with them. You have to choose the appropriate size. I've had a lot of people say, how does this scale to a company of 35,000 people? I said, well, you don't typically jam 35,000 people into a conference room anyways. You break it up. And that's exactly what you do. 
You can do this with a team and have them go back and do it with their departments. Make it about learning and not training. This is a training right here, guys. That's what this is. But I'm not coming alongside you to educate you. When I'm done and I'm off the stage, I have no more obligation to you than, than anything else. When it comes to your users, you need to come alongside them and make it about education. You need to invest in them learning. You have to want them to learn because when they learn, it makes your job easier. So, and I'll go through and how we set up our, our thing. So when you're selling it to the executive team, Jason Street in one of his talks says, if making a pie chart will get the executives involved with security, I'll bake them a freaking pie. And you can hear that in the Jason Street accent. I can't do it, so. <laughs> I'll bake them a freaking pie! <laughs> Give them graphs. Give them spreadsheets. They like it. So do it. You need them buy-in. In the same way that you're going to do some research about any type of technology, technology procurement, and you want people to, to sell you, and you want to see the demo, and you want to see the, the metrics, do it for your, your C-levels. This is going to help you. Get them buy-in. If that means graphs, make a freaking graph. Show the cost difference between the training and what we're doing right now and the results, and what this is going to do. I did this for a company of 80 people. Now, granted, that's small, but a company of 80 people, and I did it for $1,200. That was it. $1,200. You can't shake a stick at any of these programs for that type of money. You just can't. And I did it for $1,200, and I got everyone excited about it. Show how this helps employee morale. We actually got people so excited about this that they were at the water cooler going, you're going down. <laughs> I'm finding the next one. I'm winning this thing. I'm getting that card. And it was so much, it was, it was a lot of fun. And people actually had fun at work that week. They really had a good time. Then you have to get your IT team involved. One of the things that I decided to do was to make my IT the red team. And that was fun. I'm like, how can we screw with the users? What can we do? And of course, every idea imaginable came up. Get them involved with them. You want them on this. You don't want this to think, oh. This means I'm going to have so much more work. I'm already overworked. I've got, I don't want to deal with this. Have them be part of the planning process. Don't just come and say, this is what we're going to do. Have them help you decide on what you're going to do. Because then it's their part of it. It's their deal as well. Let them be the bad guys. Then you've got to sell it to the users. And this is a hard one. The first thing you have to do is you have to regain their trust and their respect. It took me a year to before I was able to implement this. And that's because I had burned a lot of people pretty bad. And no one wanted to deal with me or talk with me. So there was no way I was going to implement this with, with the way that my people's users' perception of me was, was at that point. I needed to rebuild their trust before I could even think of implementing this program. And that's pivotal. And that's something that most people and most organizations and a lot of IT shops are missing that without that respect, that when we treat our users like crap, we can't expect them to want to be a part of our team. You have to do the education piece. You need to go alongside them. This is not about, you clicked a link, you're stupid, you now have to go sit into a, a meeting for two hours that you're probably going to be on social media anyways, but this is our corporate policy. That's asinine. No one learns that way. Nobody. Um, empower users to be part of the defensive strategy. Let them know that when, when they spot things that are out of ordinary, they keep the company safe. And it keeps our jobs safe. We don't have to spend extra money on a lot of ridiculous things like breach notification. You know? It, it helps the company. It keeps your job. And make it fun. Have fun with them. I mean, for crying out loud, this is a great way to you know, use the company's money to have fun. Choose the appropriate size. We were a, we're a small business, obviously. But like I said, you're going to want to break this up into individual groups. There's no way you're going to run a competition for 35,000 people. It's just, it's, it's unmanageable. But you can do it by department. And then you don't need to break the bank on this one, as I said. And it doesn't necessarily have to be money. Money is great. It works really well. But it doesn't have to be. It could be pizza. It could be PTO. It could be a point-based system. Think of, think of games, for crying out loud. I mean, look at Farmville and everyone else. I mean, everyone does this crap to get fake coins, and they're, and they're addicted to it. So give them freaking fake coins and let them re turn them in for other incentives, like PTO. You know, you get 1,000 coins, you get a, a day of PTO, whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to break the bank. Be creative. 
make it about learning. When someone brings something to you or they uh, fail, and they will fail, as we all do, they'll click a link, they'll click something that they shouldn't. You don't bring them in and say, you clicked the link. I can't believe that. Why would you do something like that? Do you realize? That? Just shut up. It's OK, so you click the link. I get it. But did you see how that happened? Here are the ways that you can look to identify this going forward. And that's exactly what the bad guys do. This is exactly what they try to do at home and to your kids and to everyone else. So the next time you see this, please let me know. And if you have any questions, let me know. And I will be glad to answer them for you. Thanks, Ben. So how did we set it up? We created application incidents, physical incidents, phishing incidents, and web incidents. So we created several categories, and we created a framework so that everyone could uh, see what was going on. And uh, we had a framework that they sent an email, and I could automatically assign points or close out the ticket and say, no, this really wasn't a security incident. So these were some of the ideas that we chose. But before I continue, understand that this is what we came up with. It may not necessarily work at your organization. A competition may not work. But what I'm trying to do is give you the tools to think creatively and to think outside of the box. So one of the things we did is we have an in-house application that we develop. And so what we created an alert to see if anyone would just click OK. It was out of the ordinary, right? When they log in, it, they didn't typically get an alert. So we created something that was out of the ordinary to see if they would stop and ask us or if they just clicked OK. If they stopped and they asked us, we gave them 50 points. And it, let me tell you, the first time somebody got a point, like the number of clicks went <laughs> because they started talking. I can say I have 50 points. Oh, let me, let me not click that too. Put an exe with Meterpreter reverse shell on the user's uh, PC to flag IV. So what I did is I just created a uh, Meterpreter exe, and I just put it on. We knew that our AV would catch it because it wasn't encoded. It was baseline. The signature was there. It wasn't malicious. If someone got a hold of it, it wasn't going to go anywhere. But because it had the signature, boom, AV popped up. Bunk. What did anyone tell me? And again, you may guess not want to do that. We did. Would they tell me if they, an AV box popped up? We did physical incidents. We taped the, the latch on the door. You have to enter a keypad to get in. We taped it. We put gaffer's tape on there. And we wanted to see if anyone would notice that they didn't have to enter a code to get in. You just pushed the door, and it just came open. And it closed differently, too. It made a different sound because the latch wasn't hitting. And sure enough, some people didn't see it, but some people did. We covered a security camera with paper. Like, we just put printer paper on it. We had a friend. He was carrying boxes. And he was watching all the employees come in. And he's sitting there, and he's like, hey, can you hold the door for me? And we wanted to see if anyone would let him in. I mean, because who's going to be the schmuck that doesn't hold the door for the guy with the boxes? We did phishing incidents. We, uh, we actually hired a third party company um, that I can't name uh, legal asking not to. Uh, we, we hired them, and they created a custom email campaign just for us. Uh, we gave them a lot of our internal workings. They knew a lot about our company because we gave it to them. They didn't have to do open source intelligence. Uh, we gave them much more information than what you can gather about us. And they specifically tailored the phishing incidents to our organization. They sent it out. They got zero clicks. Nobody did. I mean, zero. I'm not saying that, that we won't ever get a click. I'm not saying that they're perfect. But we got our users into the habit of knowing that when they tell us about this stuff, that there's an incentive involved. So when they got the email that was out of the ordinary, they said, is this OK? Should I click it or not? And they got zero clicks. Pissed off the company doing it because they're like, man, this is not working. But they got zero clicks. They reported them all. Uh, we, I sent an email from a similar looking email. So like it's like ben.10 at domain. I just did ben10 just to see if anyone would notice that it's a different email. Some people didn't, but some people did. And then when we came back, I said, hey, did you guys recognize that the email was different? Do you look at just the message, or do you look at who's from? And then we sent, a e we sent one email, and I got a few people on this, that they could download their free Visa gift card. <laughs> Click this link to download your Visa gift card. <laughs> it was from Happy Occupants Car Wash and Bank. <laughs> and I got a few clicks on it. And I, <laughs> I felt bad. I'm like, so how would you use the downloaded gift card? <laughs> so. 
you know, so that was one of the things that we did. We created web incidents. We created invalid certificates. Would they click OK? Would they go through the invalid cert? Because that's one of the, that's one of the attack vectors when you're doing man in the middles. You're going to get invalid certs. So I just gave them an invalid cert on one of our in-house apps just to see if they would tell me about it. Uh, we created a redirect to an IP instead of a URL. So when they went to log in, it would redirect to an IP, and we used set to clone the page. But it's now an IP and not a URL. Did you notice that that happened? Uh, we created a JavaScript on a permission on a website that they went to log in. Java popped up. Did they click OK? We did a lot of the same stuff that the attackers are doing, and we controlled it because we wanted people to see what it's like when these guys are doing it. We know what it looks like, but they may not. And they may not know that Java popping up on a site that they're not typical is not OK. Part of the reason is we haven't told them that it's not OK. So these were some of the tools that I had used. Uh, email, set, Metasploit. One of the things that I wanted to do is I didn't want to leave like Metripiter out there and a lot of other tools that are used for somebody else to, to utilize to breach my network or to, or to use to pivot. And so what I did is I created a benign application, or benign, that we can put out there that would track the users so I could have the analytics, but it was actually completely benign. It didn't do anything bad, and it's AV didn't flag it. So I created the benign application, and then I created a security comp framework, uh, which I'm still uh, f finalizing to put out to uh, GitHub, so that you guys can utilize yourself. It'll just read in emails, nice, easy user, user interface to run your competition. And then I used my friends. I'm like, hey, man, can you come break into my company? <laughs> like, dude, that's awesome. Sure, I'll come do it. So this is uh, the, se the security comp framework that I wrote. It's all web-based PHP. And uh, it kind of keeps a track of all of the tickets that are coming in. You can read the emails, assign the points, assign it to a category. Uh, just basically made it an easy way for us to run this. Because one of the things is you, you, know, you, you get this influx of emails. You're not going to be sitting there answering 1,000 emails every day. So we created this in. You could select a bunch. Like if there's a bunch of junk ones, you could just close them out. But I want to show you some of the responses that I got from running this security competition. I want to show you how people started to get engaged. One of the emails that we got was, just got a semantic antivirus detection results box pop up on my screen. Wget1, Trojan sort, sort info, should I click on this or not? So that was the, that was the, that was the, um, the virus that I had put on everyone's box. So they clicked on that, or they, they, they let me know about that. I received an email from UPS stating that I have a package and it was returned, and now I should log into the website to verify my delivery. Very typical. That was the phishing email campaign. Hi, someone is drilling outside the new door. I'm on my way to investigate. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's, it, it's OK. <laughs> They're here working on the door. It, and then, and then they sent another email. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. The driller is clean. <laughs> 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 they started to get excited about it because we had a leaderboard. And you could see, you know, one of these, some of these people got 200 points here. And some of these were only five point things. They started catching everything. And, and, and they started going a little bit crazy, too. They started catching really esoteric things. And I'm like, it made us laugh. It was great. Uh, but, but you know, like some of the things that were really silly, like the print, the, there was printed HICFAs right side up on the, with patient information showing by the HICFA printer. Yeah, we have to print in this organization. It's OK. There's nothing we can do about it. They're, they're going to come out of the printer, and they will have PHI on them. Nothing we can do. This one got me a little concerned. This was about the time that uh, Pony Plug had come out. You guys, Pony Plug, the power strip that you just plug in and it's awesome. And so they're like, there's a little black box on the floor next to the shelves by Ben's office before the break room that wasn't there before. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Someone put a phone plug on my network. And I'm, I'm, I'm paranoid. And in my opinion, if you're a good security professional, you have a healthy level of paranoia. I have an unhealthy level of paranoia. <laughs> and so I'm running around. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. And so sure enough, I go outside my office and I see this. And I'm like, what the? It's a freaking rat trap. <laughs> and I'm like, that's OK. That's for our four-legged intrusion prevention system. It's all good. <laughs> but they started to notice things that were outside of the ordinary because they wanted the points. They were literally looking around our suite, trying to find something that didn't look right. And that's what we want them to do, right? 
That's exactly what we want them to do. Get them, I mean, most people come in, they're, they're, they don't even know if you put a security camera up. Get them incentivized to see around their office. So this is the Ben 9 application, which is available on GitHub. I'll give you guys the, uh, the URL at the end of the talk. But it works in Windows. It's just a Python script. I also have a .NET version for those who are just simply Windows shops and don't want to deal with all of that stuff. You can download the .NET version. It's got a listener and a client. Uh, what we did is we renamed the client to change password, and we put it out onto our sh uh, local shares. And we put it in a bunch of different directories. And what we asked everyone to do is change their password. Like, within the next week, please change your password. Because we wanted to see, oh, well, I can just change my password here. I just click this link and hit change password. And what it would do is it would actually tell us whether or not someone clicked the exe, but then there's also a web-based as well. So you only needed one listener. So you had the server, it's set up, and then what it does is that when you click, it'll actually put everything in pipe delineated. So you can dump it to Excel, do any type of graphs, sheets, whatever you want with it. It'll check for clicks, it'll check for web-based, whatever. So it's not like you're having to do multiple setups for this, it's one setup. Uh, so you can see that I'm running this through Sigwin um, because I'm a Windows guy, but I also like Linux. So you can run it through both. And then this is the web click one. So there's a PHP file that I've got along with it that you can modify. And it, the same listener will detect, detect whether or not it's a web click, whether it's an exe click, whatever the case may be. Completely benign. All it does is logs, and that's it. And it's open source, so you guys can take it, modify it, do whatever you want with it. But this was one thing that I wanted to do because I wanted to be able to see when people click stuff that they shouldn't. I mean, there's some things that you can track, but other things you can't. Like, if they visit a website, I wanted to just be able to see that so that I could go back and come alongside that user and provide them that user education. So a lot of people ask me about metrics. And I'll let you guys read this real quick. So a lot of people are like, well, what are your metrics? <laughs> 22. There, there's my metrics. It, metrics are different. Uh, what we found is that we have an increase in notifications. And a lot of them are benign. A lot of them are esoteric. A lot of them have nothing to do with security whatsoever. But we have caught three actual incidents since we implemented this. Now that seems low. But that's three that people would not have mentioned. And all it takes is one for your network to be bad, for a bad guy to get in, and for things to go for six months without us knowing about it. Your metrics are going to be different than mine. What you have to know and understand is your organization and your users and your people and what they're doing right now. Are you getting feedback from your users about things, or do they think that you're a jerk and they don't want to talk to you? We have had an influx in notifications to our security systems about these types of things, and we say thank you every single time. We hired three separate uh, uh, pen testing companies, uh, one out of Chicago, uh, one out of Ohio, and a third, again, I can't uh, disclose. Three separate, internal, external, full social engineering, engineering, and I said go after the CEO. I want you to go after her. She's not exempt. We did all of this, and you know, one of the things is we're small, so we're able to be a little bit more locked down in most organizations, but they got nothing from our users, nothing. And they actually had to send it back and do a retest because they thought that the original tester did it wrong. It works. That's my metric. I can't show you the reports, but I can tell you that it works. And part of it is you'll start to see it when you change the way that you interact with your users. You'll start to see a change in your entire dyna dynamic of your organization. In conclusion, what I want you guys to understand is that this is not designed so that uh, this would be the layer that will completely change your organization and you'll never get a user click. We, we will get a user click. We're, someone's going to click something that's stupid. You know, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. This is not designed to, to, to uh, harden your network so that you'll never have an incident. That's not the case. Remember, this is multi-layer. What I'm telling you is don't throw the layer out. Change the layer. Make it stronger. You're not only going to change your entire corporate uh, security stance, you're going to change your entire corporate environment. 
because users are actually going to want to be a part of your team. Come up with a way that's going to work best for your organizations. And I've heard some great feedback from other organizations. They've got a, uh, one company is, it has developed an internal little game type thing, and they've got like Steam achievements and everything else like that. And it's just like little, little banners, like you've got on Stack Exchange or whatever the case may be, something that shows, hey, I'm the top security guy this week. Come up with something unique and fun. I mean, we like playing games. Why don't we make this a game for them? It makes our job a lot easier. So before I go on, uh, I do question and answers. Uh, I want to say thank you to Jason Street, Security Moe, Elizabeth Martin, Dual Core, and uh, of course, B Size Detroit for having me out here. Uh, so you can get a hold of me on, at Ben10 on Twitter. Uh, it's 0XA. So just so everyone knows, it's not OXA, it's 0XA. Uh, you can get a hold of me at bsitesdetroit at ben10.com. I'm on Freenode on IRC in the BurbSec and the MySec channel. They let me in. Uh, so I'm, I'm, honorary, uh, I'm honorary MySec channel. And then all of my code is out on uh, GitHub. I also have some PowerShell scripts um, out there to help you guys out with uh, KBs and anything. So does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Yep, we actually had the leaderboard uh, out by the time clock. So when they came in every morning, they could see who was in, in the top lead. And then what we did is uh, the top place person had, was going to win the $100 gift card, and then they had different, and we color coded it. And then uh, two days before the competition ended, I, I put question marks instead of their names in the top five. So no one could know until the very end who actually won the competition. That kind of pissed everyone off, but it was really fun, and it was it led up to it. So we let everyone have like a leaderboard and everything else. And even on the leaderboard, I put an invalid cert. So when they came in one day, it said invalid certificate, just to see if anyone would say anything. Yes? Instead of doing this, um, let's say you're having an actual pen test or a test here. Sure. What are your thoughts about doing it on an ongoing basis like normal business? Well, see, that's the whole. Uh, it, yeah, great question. And one thing I didn't mention is that when we did the competition, it didn't end at the end. We allow them to send in reports throughout the year, and it builds up their score for the next competition. So they're already in the lead. So we typically will have things ongoing, and we will drop things. Like, for example, uh, like TrustWave reports. And I'm not, I'm not a, I don't work for TrustWave. I, I like the reports because they have graphs and infographics. And that's amazing because I can just hit print and put it up by the time clock, or send it out an email and say, look and see what this is. And they put it in such a way that's, that's easily digestible by your user base that it doesn't, you don't have to have a huge amount of technical expertise. You guys can choose something else that goes along with that and say, hey, uh, we want you guys to start using passphrases. Now, we had recently implemented passphrases before the Trustway report came out. And the cool thing was is because we were, had everyone on board with it, the CEO, who would typically have the same password, and like seven people in the organization knew what her password was because she told them. And I came back to her and I showed her, I'm like, look, I cracked your password in like less than two seconds. She implemented a passphrase, sent me an email and it said, come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it is ongoing. It's something that you can do, keep going on and getting them excited about. Yes. We are 80 people, yeah, yeah. We, we deal with uh, 35 different facilities, and we have some offshore teams as well. So, uh, but internal in-house, we have 80 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, for like new employees, uh -huh. um, you know, preference, uh, do you do anything uh, as part of the, uh, the, the uh, orientation? Yep, absolutely. What we do is we typically will go through, and we will hit a lot of the top hot options. It's again, we go through the security manual, as everyone should do. Um, but what we also do is we, we go through and we explain to them, there are security competitions. As you learn your job, you will quickly learn what's out of the ordinary. Do us a favor, the first out of the ordinary you see, send it to us and we'll immediately get you points on the board so that you can work towards getting this cool prize. And that's the whole idea is that we want to get them to start to know, to realize that they, they're in the running just like with everyone else and just give us that first out of the ordinary just so you get in the habit of trying to see that. And that's it. We don't have to train them on everything. We just want them to s tell us anything that's out of the ordinary. And we're going to get a lot of esoteric uh, stuff that goes along with that. But that's OK. It gives us something to laugh about. Yeah? yeah um, do you do ongoing like, uh, I don't know, updates, like, hey, you know, check out the URL, make sure, you know, things like that? Yes. Uh, and that, 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 
Well, that's the, that's not talking about the infographics uh, that we that we will send out, like the the pass phrases versus this, or how to keep your kids safe on Facebook, or uh, this is one of the new attack vectors that everyone's doing. Um, we don't use buzzwords like APT and cyber in China. Uh, we don't we don't go through and scare our users, but what we do is we go and say, we try and relate to them, and we also put it to their kids. That's one of the most effective things I have found. If you let them know that you're concerned about their kids, they're going to want to more uh, implement it for themselves because they want to keep their family safe as well. So we do that on an ongoing basis. Email, or posters, or Email posters, whatever the case may be. We try and do it multiple different ways. Yeah. And then one of the things that I'll do is occasionally I'll change up the email for the post that I put out just to see if someone said, up, oh, I saw you put a link in there. I'm not clicking it. <laughs> and then they get some points on there. So even in the notifications, we put something that's out of the ordinary just to see if people are going to do that. Yeah. yeah. So Ben, I've seen your talks a couple of times and all of them make sense. Um, but I've heard you mention this before. When you change what thing with regard to your users, you mentioned at one of the other conferences that you could have easily remember like, I got an email at home, blah, 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 blah. And if you have a little, that's not my problem. It's not work related. It's I, I know that you're one of those guys now that says, hey, thank you for alerting me that here's how we can educate you going forward. So yeah, well, kind of like what uh, Derek was just talking about is that when you get them to talk about their family, they'll come in and be like, yeah, I just got an email that was like I had won a million dollars and I just had to send some information over to them. And I know that I'm supposed to spot things out of the ordinary, but I really want a million dollars, so I'm really hoping that this is legit. Yeah, no, it's not. It, you're only getting 500,000. Just give me your information. <laughs> But but they do. They come in. They tell you like, yeah, I saw that, and someone call, someone called me, and they said I had a problem on my computer. I didn't give them my information. And I hung up the phone. So, you know, so they do. They start to take it home. So, any other questions? Yes. This is just a, a comment on the keeping your kids safe thing. We whenever we do security analysis, we ask do you always have um, like there's free stuff from the FTC about keeping your kids safe online. We get more traction from that than anything. Absolutely. Yeah. You. That's Yep. If they learn one good habit to keep their kids safe, yep. it, it translates yep. and, it's, and it's free stuff available. Absolutely, absolutely. So and, and one of the easiest things that we actually recently implemented uh, was passphrases, amazingly enough. Because I sat him in the conference room and I gave him a 14 character, randomly character, very strong password. I left him on the screen for five seconds and then I put it away and I said, now tell me what the password is, anyone, and I've got $100 if you can tell me what it is. <laughs> There's nobody in here that would do it. And then I put up a uh, 22 character, the purple horse has flying wings. Left it up for three seconds, closed it. What was the password? <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, see, isn't that much easier? So we just switched the passphrases. I'm like, what would you rather have? 14, ridiculous, or this? And they're like, oh, I'd rather have that. It's easier to remember. It was so much easier for them to get fit into passphrases. And that's because they had a part of the thing. So I think I'm out of time. So guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it.